this problem has us finding the equation of the following rational function. Now when I do problems like this, um, I always write down what I know the rational function has and then I translate it into the form of an equation. So right now I know I have x-intercepts at the following ordered pairs, negative 2, 0 and 1, 0. I have vertical asymptotes at the lines x equal minus 3 and x equal 2 and then I have a horizontal asymptote at x equal oh sorry not x y equal 2. Okay so when I look at this list up here um, I notice my horizontal asymptote is not 0 and it is not oblique which is what this case is. So this is my case right here. I have a horizontal asymptote that is a number. So my ratio of leading terms or my degree of my numerator has to equal to the degree of my denominator and my ratio of leading terms has to be two. Okay, that's, that's all that means there. So based on this, what I know is that x-intercepts are in the numerator. The vertical asymptotes are in the denominator and the horizontal asymptotes has to do with degree of the polynomials that are in the numerator and denominator. I'll put pr this parenthesis so it sets it off a little bit. When I go over here then to create my equation I say alright f of x is equal to now in my numerator I know a factor is going to be x plus 2 because negative 2 will make that 0 I have a factor x minus 1 because 1 will make that 0. Do something similar in the denominator. x plus 3 becomes 0 when x is negative 3 and x minus 2 becomes 0 when x is 2. So, so far this is a pretty good equation right here. The only problem is is that I believe if I take my ratio of leading terms I'll get x squared in the numerator and x squared in the denominator so I end up with a ratio of leading terms which is equal to 1. So I want it to be 2 so I'm going to stick a 2 up here and then I'll come over here and I'll just say alright my ratio of leading terms f of x is approximately equal to 2x squared in the numerator 2x squared that's the highest degree term and the denominator just x squared and that's going to give me the 2 that I want. Of course, this is only true. That's why I put the approximation. This is only true for large x. In other words, when I'm way on the ends, way out here, that's only true for large x. So now we have this lovely graph, and don't just stop there. Check it. So let's move this up a little bit, and let's go to the calculator and see if we can get the same graph. So let's quit this and in my y equals I'm going to enter the exact equation that I have there two well let's put that in parentheses two times x plus two times x minus one and the numerator all has to be in parentheses and so does the denominator so divided by x plus three x minus 2. Don't forget these additional parentheses have to be there. That's not an option. Now my window, I look at this window and I see it looks like um, this is about minus 5 to 5 say and maybe minus 4 to 4. So I'm going to do the exact same window. Minus 5 to 5 minus 4 to 4 minus scales 1 there. It's fine. And graph it and let's see what happens. Now if you have a TI-83, these vertical lines make you believe that you have asymptotes there, right? Well, technically those aren't part of the graph. That's actually error that the calculator is making. If you do the same graph on, say, a TI-84 or TI-89, those won't be there because they're not supposed to be there. Anything in a, in a graph in math that's dotted lines is not included in the picture. So this, again, is not supposed to be included in your picture. That is just error. However, I'm going to give an idea here to see if my horizontal asymptote is right. So I'm going to let y equal 2 and look at that. So if you imagine that these three lines here are dotted, this looks exactly like 
that graph there. And we're done.